Hello, my name is Luke, and I'm a developer relations engineer here at Google. Today, I'd like to talk about a new key pair value feature in Blockstore, which allows you to save up to 64 times more data and the ability to pair byte array packets with a key. First, let's do a quick recap. Have you ever wanted to immediately retrieve user preferences or session data when a user gets a new phone or tablet? Want to make sure this data is encrypted end to end? Want to create seamless sign-on experiences for existing users? Great, Blockstore has you covered. When users set up a new device, they can go through the backup and restore process using device-to-device -device transfer or cloud restore. Once the user goes through this process, any data you choose to save to Blockstore will be made immediately available on the device when the user opens the application. This is particularly helpful for users as you can choose to save important information such as session data or user preferences. Some advantages to Blockstore include you can locally store data outside of the application's partition, meaning if the user uninstalls the application, the data is still persistent when the application is reinstalled. You can also choose to back up these values to the cloud. This is built on top of the backup and restore infrastructure, which offers end-to-end -end encryption for this data and a great user experience allowing users to choose what they back up. For more information on Blockstore, you can check out our IO video and the link is in the description below. Now that we're caught up with Blockstore, let's look at a few examples of how the new key pair value feature works. First, let's add the latest Blockstore dependency 16.2.0 to our Gradle file. Next, we can start by adding the data to Blockstore. And to do this, we need to simply supply a byte array and a key for storing this data. We can first do this by getting an instance to Blockstore and creating a simple byte array and string. Next, we will create a store bytes data object using its builder. And here, we will use the set previously created byte array and key by placing them in their respective methods, set bytes and set key. Once we have the store bytes data object created, we can use this to call the method store bytes in the Blockstore clan. And when using this, you'll have the option to add listeners on success and on failure. And these listeners will inform you if the data was successfully saved or failed. Note, if the key is not supplied, then the value that will be used will be the default bytes data key. Great, now we've easily saved our data to Blockstore. Next, we can retrieve this data. Remember, if the user's on a new phone, as long as they've gone through the restore flow process, then the data saved in Blockstore will be available. Retrieving data is as simple as creating a string array with a list of the keys you wish to retrieve and providing it to the retrieve bytes request builder using set keys method. We could also use the set retrieve all method for getting all this data too. Next, we can add this request to our block store client, adding the events on success and on failure, and they will be called respectively. When we receive the call from our on success listener, you will notice that you are given a map of key pair values back you can now obtain the data you want by using the key to get the value back from the block store data map object in the result. Lastly, we can also select data we want to delete using the delete bytes method in our block store clan. Exactly like retrieving the data, we can supply an array of keys we wish to delete and from here, pass these to the set keys method. For more information, you can go to developers.google.com and search for block store or find the link in the description below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.